The NFL season is over, and the Kansas City Chiefs have repeated as Super Bowl champions, defeating the San Francisco 49ers 25-22 to in Las Vegas. Let's break it down. We're going to do it with SI Now senior host, my guy Robin Lundberg, who joins me now. Robin, how's it going? It's going pretty well. I mean, look, we, we talk about the, the Super Bowl being a good game, right? I oftentimes hear people say, all I want is a good game. Well, you got a good game. Everybody should be happy. You got a good game. You got a good halftime show. There should be no complaining. There should, but you know what? Somebody will always complain, Rob, and you know this. You've been doing this for a long time. Somebody will find a reason to complain. I agree with you. Good Super Bowl. Good halftime show. You shouldn't have much to complain about, but somebody will. Robin, we saw a fantastic finish to this game with Patrick Mahomes finding McCall Hardman in the end zone. What did you think of the flow of the game? Because this one started out as an offensive struggle, but how did you like the flow of Super Bowl 58? I thought it was dramatic. I, I love the flow of the game. Look, um, one of the reasons I picked the Chiefs this whole playoff run, which included going to Buffalo, included going to Baltimore, right? And, and now beating the San Francisco 49ers, three of the teams that many people would have considered the best in the entire NFL, was because they had a good defense. You know, the, the Chiefs didn't really light the world on fire offensively this year. They had a lot of drops and everything, but they had a good defense, so that defense was able to ugly it up. The 49ers, we know they're stacked. We know they're talented across the board, and their defense brought it too. So, you know, Patrick Mahomes and, and Brock Purdy, it's not like either of them played poorly. Mahomes had one mistake. But it was the defense is getting after it and really forcing turnovers. And McCaffrey had the turnover. The Chiefs had the turnover as well. So instead of it feeling like it was going to be a shootout, which I know some people like and, and can always be entertaining, of course, each point felt so consequential, which only ramped up the drama when you got to the fourth quarter and eventually overtime. Yeah, no, there's no doubt about that. And you had the drama there. We talk about the Chiefs, but on the other side, the Niners, they lose a tough one. And Kyle Shanahan now 0-2 as a head coach in the Super Bowl. How disappointing is this for San Francisco? And is it fair to question two things with Shanahan? One, there's some concern about the fact that he took the ball to start overtime. And then now another question that comes up is his ability to win the big game. Do you think those questions are fair regarding Kyle Shanahan? Not really. Um, you know, not really. I, I feel like if I could pinpoint one thing that I vehemently disagreed with, I could say perhaps blame him. But there's a definition for blame I like, which is a way to discharge pain and discomfort. Because how disappointing is it to your first question? It's utterly and bitterly disappointing. If you're a fan, San Francisco 49ers fan right now, you are destroyed, right? That Not a moral victory would happen. But I, I thought Kyle Shanahan coached the game to win. I thought his team was in position to win. The, the game went to overtime with the, the Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, I, I guarantee you we're going to talk about Patrick Mahomes and where he has etched himself in the annals of history. So you lost to a quarterback who has already etched himself in the annals of history in overtime, like uh, as tight as it gets. And Shanahan, you know, to me, the biggest mistake he's made in a, a big spot was as the offensive coordinator with the Atlanta Falcons when Brady came back and the, the Patriots came back from 28 to 3. That's the, the one I still blame him for. Since then, I, I think all he's proven is that he's a damn good coach. I mean, his teams habitually are in the NFC Championship game or the Super Bowl. So could he have done certain things better? Yeah. But perfect is the enemy of good. And, and it feels pretty silly to knock a guy who has accomplished what he's accomplished so consistently because he lost a tight overtime game to Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I think that's a great point in what you make there and that there's – Really no shame. You want to win, but there's no shame in losing to Patrick Mahomes, who appears to be the greatest quarterback of his generation right now. Speaking of Patrick Mahomes, now he's won his third Super Bowl title, third Super Bowl MVP. How much does this win enhance his legacy? And of his three titles, is this one the most impressive one, Robin? I think in some ways it is because of the opponents that I listed off, you know, at Buffalo, at Baltimore, against the San Francisco 49ers on a Chiefs team that people didn't consider to be some sort of juggernaut. But as far as his legacy goes, look, it's um, the Mahomes-Brady debate. I don't know. We don't treat the, the NFL the same way necessarily we do the NBA. The discourse is not exactly identical, right? Because you think about Green Bay and Pittsburgh. If a player went to Green Bay or Pittsburgh in, in the NBA, we'd be talking about them going to purgatory. But in the NFL, those are heritage franchises because the NFL is popular everywhere. People watch no matter what the team is. So it, it doesn't always go down to the star versus star debate or things of that nature. 
but I do believe you see that burgeoning, and this gives the ammunition to further thrust Mahomes into that debate. So as close as it can be to Jordan and LeBron, the NFL has a version of that conversation now with Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes. Uh, no doubt about that. Mahomes has put himself into that stratosphere and that conversation for sure. Last thing for me, Robin, this Chiefs team is the first team to win back-to-back -back titles since the Patriots did it in 2003 and 2004. With what they have accomplished with the best QB in the sport, do you think they can make it three in a row in 2025? Yeah, of course. I mean, I pick it with the Chiefs until proven otherwise. I picked the Chiefs in all those games that I mentioned. And, and if you've picked the Chiefs, since Mahomes took over, if you've picked the Chiefs every single week, you have a darn good record. <laughs> you look pretty good. So I will trust that philosophy. I'm not saying it's a guarantee. Uh, I'm not saying I'll be shocked if they don't win it. But if you're telling me right now I have to choose one team to win it next year, it's the team with number 15, the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, don't think that's a bad move to go there. I picked the Chiefs to win all their games throughout the playoffs, too. So I'm glad you and I, we had the same vibes here. I'm glad we were able to do that. That is Robin Lumberg, senior host for SI Now. Check out his work. Robin, always good to talk to you. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me after Super Bowl 58. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah, you got it. Of course, man. And speaking of similar vibes, you know who I wish I had similar vibes with? Usher. I want to be able to dance like Usher after watching that halftime. Yeah, you know what? In the next life. In the next life or another life, it would. Usher, Usher killed it. I'm glad you enjoyed that, too. Yeah. It right, ain't man. happening for me. <laughs> Not happening. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it.